Hey everyone, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, clearly we are open for business and that was a phone call I had been waiting on since early this morning. So I'm, I could not ignore it. So I appreciate you all with your patience and understanding uh, and you know, knowing I would come back, which I did. So thank you very much. All right, we're gonna finish up painting our cups and then we're gonna talk about the other projects we're moving on to. And I am just, everywhere I touch, I have this paint everywhere today. Sorry about that, I can't even move because I seem to have gotten brown paint, brown set coat on everything and it's gonna coat me. And I, I'm trying not to make a mess worse than I already have. See, I got it all over my elbow. I'm, I'm, I'm very good at making a mess out of myself if you haven't all noticed that from previous lives and the fact that I call myself the mistress of mess. So yeah, that's my, that's my, that's me. Okay, so we're gonna come back down. So we, I'm gonna flip the camera down. We're gonna go back to what we're doing. I, pri I primed and paint cleaned these cups. I sanded them, cleaned them with denatured alcohol, and we have primed three of them already. We have two painted black, one dark brown set coat. Again, I'm pushing jars out of the way and hopefully not sticking my elbows in something else. We're going to use, where did my gray go? I put my gray over here, there it is. Urgh. We're gonna take one and use gravel gray set coat. Now see, here's a gallon container and this is why I pour. <laughs> off into smaller containers because having big containers floating around is super messy way to do things and not my favorite all right so let me go into the container and this one yes i'm going to be dipping into and it's because i didn't pour it off into something else um so let me just give my paint a stir there we go and gravel gray is a light gray whereas Faux Effects Set Coat Charcoal Gray is a deep tone gray. So you have both options available. This one, I wanna do a lighter finish on it altogether. So I'm painting the cup a lighter color. Um, and the reason you wanna do this is the under color that you place with foils, besides the fact that we need a good bonding surface, when you, um, apply foils, there are micro cracks in it. So you'll see a, whatever color that you've applied, you will see a little hint of it underneath. And so your choice of color is important. And I guarantee you most foils do not look good over light colors unless you're using it translucently and you need it to look all light. Um, this gravel gray looks really nice under silver and so it's a favorite of mine to do silvery looking cups. All right, we're gonna shut this one down. Over there, and I have way too much paint on it, so I'm gonna brush a little bit back off. I had a very loaded down brush, and I'm just kind of fixing what the mess that I just made because that's all I ever do, make messes and then fix them. <laughs> all right, let's move that can out, container out of the way on the floor with the lid on, um, because when I don't put the lid on it, I kick the cans and they go flying across the room. And then I've made a heck of a mess that's a lot worse to clean up. So our last one is going to be red. Now. I'm at the very end of a can. Oh, no, it's still in good. I was afraid I'd had it, gotten it all thick, thickened up, but no, it's good shape. So we're going to use Set Coat Red on our pink one. Now, it may read pinker. That's not going to be a problem. Reds are tough because the base is translucent and pigment can be a challenge. So that's why they tell you to prime uh, walls gray if you're going to paint them red because otherwise you're gonna paint a lot of coats of red over white walls and not have much good result. So having this pink base might make my red a little on the pinker side with the red, but I'm okay with that, I don't like it. I'm getting a nice lipsticky kind of red out of it. So I'm 
very pleased. But you can see that the reds can be a little sheer because you can see that the print from the uh, label, you can still see it through, which is why I chose the red to go on the pink cup because I knew it would read better. All right, so those are all gonna dry. I'm not gonna touch them uh, until later today. I will probably put the foil adhesive on them later so that tomorrow when we're live, I can do foiling and we can you can see the epoxy being poured. Um, we're also gonna do some mold casting with epoxy. I lost, where did that one brush go? That's what it is, there we go. I just don't like the way the bottom of that cup looks. So I'm, fixing it and bothering me. So, all right, so if we're gonna keep this kind of abbreviated today. I didn't have a lot of plans. Today is all prep and cleanup and setting up. Um, I might take you on a little tour of the studio since a lot of you have never seen it. Um, and also wanted to quickly address uh, upcoming close downs, lockdowns. Um, Chicago, which is where we're based, just outside of the city, we're seeing more and more restrictions, which might mean that in the next couple of weeks our front door is locked, but that doesn't mean I won't be here. Just like the last lockdown we went through, I was here every day. We, we, I, I'm thinking we might do an online Christmas party so that anybody who wants to participate, I'll send them a kit and we'll do Christmas stuff. But we're working on ways to keep you creative, even if you can't come to us, um, which many of you already are not able to do so because you're not local. So don't you worry, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've checked, I, and the reason I'm addressing this is truly because I did have some people message me about this. Like, I heard Chicago is locking down. Are you still gonna be able to get out my order? Are you still gonna be able to do lives, so on and so forth. The answer to all of that is yes. Because we are an architectural coatings distributor, that allows us to stay open and it allows us to continue to ship merchandise to you. We just can't have the front doors open if that comes. Right now, that's not the case. They are requesting that people stay home, stay distanced, stay safe, but another full lockdown order has not yet happened. But um, Unfortunately, given the way the things are going, I do see that that will probably come from our governor shortly. Um, oh well, we'll find a way to get through. We've gotten through the last eight months. We're gonna get through the next, however long it's gonna be. And meanwhile, we're gonna keep creating fun stuff. So the other thing I wanted to tell you is over the weekend, I cut a whole out, I cut out a whole bunch of um, heat transfer vinyl adhesive that we carry in Christmas shapes, and we're gonna start Christmas tote bags uh, either later today or tomorrow. And we'll be doing some painting on the bags, and then we're gonna do vinyl transfers, and then we're gonna do more zhuzhing up of them. So we've got that coming. And uh, I think we've got other fun things lined up. Um, I'm gonna give you guys a momentary tour through the studio, because everybody says they can see back here. And everyone, then they see an odd spot over there. So I just want to share with you what, how our studio is actually shaped. And that's going to take a second. So let me, hey, Minetta, nice to see you. So let me flip the camera, see if it's going to let me do that. There we go. Okay, so we're going to go point to the back first. Sorry for the shelf view. So back here, this is the workhorse area. We have our big sink. We have merchandise on shelves, packing equipment, and clearly I'm still putting away things. You can see I actually have uh, items piled up on pieces of furniture that I'm painting. We have all kinds of workspace, another client project. This is our packing center, which has clearly been used a lot today. And, um, this is, this is my broom that gets a lot more use than I expected, but not as much as it should. So we're gonna come back here, and this is facing into our classroom area. Uh, clearly we only have one table set up for classes because since lockdown, we have not been hosting classes. But uh, we're getting back there. We're gonna find a way to have everybody have classes. Um, 
our foil racks. These are our V masks and golds and silvers here. And we can come into the front area of the store, which again is gonna be a disaster because we are redoing our window. So here's our window in process. All kinds of goodies everywhere to be going into the window shortly. Products on display. Our dollar stencil rack. Lots of other fun things on the shelves. All of these items are for sale, but we do need to uh, organize a little better. And of course, you can see we have a beautiful view out our window. This is one of the streets in Brookfield, and it's probably the main dragon. It stays very busy. And I have a wonderful florist who popped by earlier. Look at the gorgeous flowers he does for us. And he does our artificial arrangements that are in the window for the holidays. Okay, so back to me. That was a quick tour of the studio. Um, hey everyone, Maury Curtis Dunbar here. <clears throat> Excuse me, a little frog in my throat. We are back at Painted Studio. We are working on the cups that we started yesterday and we are going to have so much fun going forward. I've got a whole bunch of words and phrases cut out. Hey Terry, nice to see you here. Um, so we're going to foil, we're going to seal, then we're going to put the phrases on the cups. Then I'm going to give you all a little break. We'll probably come back later. We'll do epoxy and stuff. So it'll be a couple lives happening today because there's a lot going on to get these cups done. I have five cups sitting in front of me. We'll foil and do all that on five, but I can only, I only have four turners. So later on when we do the epoxy, there are only going to be four going on today. One is going to have to wait for tomorrow. Alrighty, so I'm not going to spend a lot of time chatting, but uh, I do want to cover a couple things. Luann, nice to see you here. So I'm squinting at the screen so I can see who came in. Um, this Good Friday week, uh, Good Friday, wrong Friday, Black Friday. Sorry, everybody, wrong season, wrong holiday, wrong everything. So Black Friday is coming up. We are going to be doing Shop Small Saturdays local specials. We will have a Black Friday Cyber Monday sale going on our website. So there's lots of exciting things happening. You'll find out more as we get closer. Clearly we are zooming in on Thanksgiving. I can't believe Thanksgiving is next week. Holy guacamole, it's like unbelievable. Hi, Teresa. Nice to see you here. So we've got our window. I took you on a little tour of the studio yesterday. We've got our window almost completely decorated. So I, I ran out of time to do everything last night. And plus, I'm making more things that we're going to put in our window and we're going to make for sale. And of course, if you see something that I'm making that you love, send me a message. It's for sale. Unless I say specifically it's for somebody already, it's all for sale. All right, um, let's flip this down and you can see here. Also, um, I'm gonna put a link in the, the um, post after I close this up, but for those not familiar, we have YouTube channels where all our live videos, unless it's an absolute disaster of a video, are posted so that you can kind of find these in an easier way because all the videos are titled so you have a better idea of what's in them. Um, Sometimes searching Facebook Live for a video isn't easy. Oh, yes, this is my disco Christmas tree sippy cup full of iced tea. Because it may be November, but I'm still drinking iced tea this year because that's the kind of year it is. All right, so we have five cups here. Yesterday we sanded, cleaned, primed with set coat, um, and then we apl I applied off-camera our Artsyville foil adhesive just so that it was ready to go when I was ready to go today. So we're gonna start with a couple different cups. I think we'll start with our black wine cup. I'm gonna take that plate out of the way, that's for later. So the first thing I'm gonna do, and I did actually plan my thinking today, I'm going to take some of our blue pebble foil, crumple it up, Let's see if I can get this better framed and maybe just a tad closer so you can see what I'm doing. I see a spot I might have missed with a little foil adhesive. Oh well, that won't matter in the end. So I'm going to take my foil, it's all crumpled up like this, and we're pouncing it. Recrumpling, re-pouncing. 
and I'm getting the bottom, I'm getting the sides. So now it's got a little bit of that bright blue all over everything, and you can see, whoops, sorry. You can see it's released from the foil. It's not all white. It's not the prettiest thing you're gonna look at today, but that'll work. And then I'm gonna take navy blue foil. And again, for those not familiar, foil has a pretty side and a not so pretty side. And it's always the not so pretty side that goes to the adhesive. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna sort of roll it like a little bit like a burrito. I'm gonna take it and smooth with my hand first. I'm probably going to have to stand up and get a brush because I cleaned up so well the other day I put everything I needed for today away. So the first thing I'm doing is smoothing it with my hand. The heat helps the release. Hey, Gilda, nice to see you there. And Kelly, nice to see you. And I think my friend Christina just popped in too. So it's nice to see everybody here. All right, so I'm just sort of crushing it all over the surface rubbing it and then I got to go grab a brush because I wasn't smart enough to leave a brush right where I need it. Fortunately, my brush stockpile is about three feet away from me, just out of my reach. <laughs> All right, so first I'm scrubbing horizontally and I'm going to go vertically. Do not scrub in circles. When you scrub in circles, you end up seeing the circle scrubbed into your surface. It's kind of messy that way. Don't forget to get the bottom. The bottom I can scrub in a circle because the bottom is a circle. All right, let's see how we did and if I need to go in and fill any spots. Okay, so I've got a little blank spot there. And that was pretty much it. I just gotta give it a little extra scrub because it's hard to tell. The navy is very dark. So it's easy to miss spots with it on a black surface. That's why I'm just going, kind of going back and scrubbing a little extra foil over those areas that I'm not sure grabbed it. Okay. So this one I thought would be awfully fun if we put let it snow on there. Now. I know that reads backwards to you. I cut these on my Cricut earlier today. Now let's see how they peel back. Now this is a vinyl I haven't worked with before. Actually, I'm not gonna put the letters on because what I wanna do is I wanna top coat each of these before I do that. I almost forgot what I was doing. So now I've got a little AquaGuard gloss. AquaGuard is made by Faux Effects. It is interior and exterior rated. I always keep a little pour off jar because if you look at the bottom of my jar, you can see that there's glitter and stuff in there. It settles to the bottoms. I don't want to contaminate an entire gallon, so I always have little pour-off jars. And I'm just going to top coat this thing. And this will be dry to the touch well before we're done with this video. And then I'll be able to put um, the letters on. I don't want to put the letters on before that because sometimes the backing tape for the lettering can play with the um, foil and give you sort of a weird frosted effect. And since nobody wants that, I'm just making sure that my cup is well sealed before uh, I go forward. All right, so we're going to use, this is our coffee cup. This is painted in set coat gravel gray and has a coating of Artsyville foil adhesive on it. And we're gonna go silver for this one. So we've got our silver cubism foil. Little holographic there. It looks way more holographic on camera than it does in person. That's the nature of these kind of um, foils. For whatever reason, they just look more holographic when you see them on camera. So I'm folding this around. And I'll have to come back and get into the little ridges here because this wants to lay right over it. Not a big deal. All right, so I'm gonna warm it with my hands. Um, so for some information about foil, if you're not familiar with it, 
foil does not like cold, foil adhesive does not like cold. So if you're having trouble with your foils releasing, your room needs to be wet, warmer than 65 degrees, your foil adhesive needs to be warmer than 65 degrees, and the room that you're doing it in needs to be warmer than 65 degrees. Personally, I found my optimum temperature is usually around 70, 72 doing this. Um, and the reason I say this, I know a lot of us um, either work in basements or garages and stuff. Don't store your foils in the cold place because your foils will not release well if they're cold. So if you can bring them into the house, bring them into a warm room, put them in a bin, find some place warm to store them. Same with the foil adhesive. The foil adhesive, if you apply it, cold and you let it try to set up cold, <coughs> excuse me, um, it doesn't set upright. It never becomes fully firm tack. It always stays gummy. So these are the reasons we tell you why you need a warm space for them. And I know we've said it before, but now I want to exactly explain why. And I didn't know that when I first started foiling. And I was still working in a studio in the basement of a building. It was chilly. Oh Lord, I screwed up my whole client project. Had to re-sand it down, repaint it, then refoil it. All right, so I'm gonna start a little scrubbing here. And then we're gonna address brush marks because everybody asks about that. First of all, super cool. Love the way that released. Now I have a little dull spot there. I probably over scrubbed. So that's one of how I know where I'm gonna probably place letters is I'm not happy with that dull spot. And you can see in the ridges here, I didn't get my foil in there. So I could do a couple things. I could sprinkle some glitter. I could put a different foil in there. What I'm going to do is release the foil that we were already using. And I got a couple spots. I might need a little touch up up here because I have a foil adhesive spot that seems to where I've skipped, which happens. You know, I paint a lot of these really fast and there can always be a skipped spot. Let's get into that ridge. get into this one and this is a non-directional foil so it doesn't matter which way I place the cup on it and fingernails and tool fingers tips are great tools for things don't don't discard them as a needing something more complex. Okay. Cup bottom. Again, scrubbing in a circle because it's a circular shape. It would be cool to do the ridges in a different color, but that's not the look I'm going for today, so that's not what's happening. So I need to put brush on a little more foil adhesive right here at this edge, which, you know, fortunately I keep my foil adhesive close by too. Let's see if we can find a little brush. There we go. And hopefully this will be, since it's such a little tiny bit right there. It's a little bit, it should set up fairly quickly. So by the, as we get towards the end of the video, I should be able to release the foil and seal it. This always happens. All right, so now here's our brown one. And all I could think of is, gosh, what am I gonna do over brown? You know, brown is not exactly a cheerful, food-friendly kind of color. So, unless it's the brown sear on the outside of a steak. So, 
I thought we'd use our Ramsey's Roses Gold on that. I thought that would be very pretty. Still festive, still holiday-ish, but a little more subtle. So we're gonna set that on here. Again, roll it up. And if you notice, the reason I'm not putting the edge down is I don't want to seam. If I do this and pinch it, I tend to get a more blurred area where the foil meets. find my apron um this is actually a woodworker's apron um that i found on amazon and if anybody wants i'll put the link in the top of the post and the reason i like it is it wraps around my waist and buckles i don't have to worry about tying it which i always and because this is waxed and the usually the belts aren't great with waxed aprons so they never stay tied i love Oh, wow, that came out so pretty. Look how beautiful that is. All right, we're going to get into the ridges. I'm not going for any contrasting striping right now. I want it all one solid color. Yeah, so this is a woodworker's apron. Buy them on Amazon. I like a good waxed apron. The reason I like this apron specifically is it doesn't go around my neck. It crisscrosses in the back, which means the bib doesn't shift. That's a big one for me. It makes me crazy when the bib here goes like off of one boob. That's how I get my clothes covered in paint. It's not comfortable. It's very unattractive to see on camera. So um, I hunted for something that would work better. And I did look at the Japanese aprons that somebody here recommended at one point. Um, that were more like a smock and crisscrossed in the back, but nobody was making them in fabric that was going to hold up well to the, to the kind of nonsense I put an apron through. You know, they were all much more delicate fabric, thinner denim. Some of them were linen. And I thought, oh my God, that's all I need is an apron that needs ironing. Okay. All right, so the last thing to get is the bottom. Those of you who are my personal friends <laughs> might be well aware that I don't like to iron and I iron like twice a year. So the last thing I want is an apron I have to iron. Okay, let's get that into that little indentation in there. Let's get into the little crevices. Look how pretty that came out. That's great. All right, so we're going to throw a top coat on that. Again, a little more AquaGuard gloss. Um, and I specifically go for a gloss so I don't lose the sheen of the foil. And really, it doesn't matter if this coat covers 100% of every inch of or this surface because I know I'm going to be putting epoxy over it to seal it up. I just need an isolating layer so that I can put my lettering on without it being problematic. So I'm going to set that right there like that and move it out of the way. We have this cup and this one, I think we're going to go with our green confetti. I love this. Oh, Maddie says, I don't iron. I think it says she means to say she steams. I don't even steam. I buy clothes that I have to iron as little as possible. I iron once a year, usually for the Thanksgiving or Christmas table so that I can put nice linens on it. And then I wash the linens and leave them hanging in, on a hanger wrinkled for until next year truly that's what I do I like I get in a mood once in a while to iron a bunch of clothes I don't know what happens when that happens to me I must I feel like you know the spirit of my mother possesses me all right so again I rubbed with my hands to make sure it's a nice warm release 
I can scrub it a little with the brush. We'll have to come back in and do the ridges. All right, so I think we should have 100% release on here, but again, if I don't, we know I got a foil adhesive right next to me to fill in the gaps. So I'm gonna do the bottom of this first. Let's see if I can get in all of the little crevices, probably none. I'll probably have to come back in and release a little more foil. Now, if you're not familiar with the Artsyville foil adhesive, it's amazing. It's pr the, truly the best foil adhesive I've ever worked with. However, the one thing you need to know is this stuff never dries, never stops being sticky. So even if you don't pour epoxy over it, you still have to top coat it because you can come back a year later and any of the little gap spots that might not have 100% coverage, uh, you'll find dust well adhered to it. Not my favorite thing to have happen. I've learned some of these things the hard way, even though people have told me, I say, oh, it'll be fine. No, it's not. It's never fine. I created a mess that then I have to clean up. So take it from one who likes to do everything the hard way first. Top coat your foil. Plus foil is fragile. Even if the adhesive dried hard, foils are fragile. And so they need to be protected because they're, they're only a few microns thick. So you'll be able to scratch through it if you don't properly seal it. We don't want that to happen. And tomorrow we're gonna to be working on Christmas bags, tote bags that will be very Christmassy. We'll do some uh, painting on them. We'll do some uh, heat transfer vinyl adhesive releasing on them. So we're gonna be very fun with that. And look how cute that is. Oh, I like that. I like that a lot. So next layer, little AquaGuard gloss. Now you notice almost every color I released over it was dark with the exception of the gray and with the gray I released silver over it, which is an appropriate under color for it. But your base color is really, really important. Um, you'll see it on other pages. I've got boards with it. There are pictures on our page. If you release foil over lighter colors, generally it looks crappy. And that's because the foil is so thin, it, when it lays down on a surface, there's gonna be microscopic and larger than that breaks in the foil. And it always helps to have a darker color under it. If you have a light color, it looks really bad. I mean, I, I can't explain it other than that. You, if you don't believe me, you can test it, but I'll show you uh, in a few minutes. I think I'll probably go up to my front and I'll show you the samples that show you I've released over different colors. Okay, uh, let's see. I'm new to the craft, so I didn't know I could just rub the print on. Yes, Christina, you can do exactly that. We, If you apply a base color and then your adhesive with foils, you can release a pattern right on here. Whatever the foil patterns are, you can just release them with the proper adhesive. Now that you can't just use any glue. You have to use a good foil adhesive, which is what we carry. All right, so we're gonna go back. And of course, if I've missed your questions, don't worry, I'll come back and find them. I always do. Now this is just a little sample of a foil I've got. Um, I don't have any more of it. That's why it's not up on the website. Uh, it wasn't one that was easily available so I'm just playing with the sample piece but we have other wonderful we have the red glitter stars we have red solid cranberry red cherry red you'll love it so we're going to take the foil again roll it down and I think before I show you the whole thing I want to take a moment Ooh, look I got it stuck so that's one of the things you have to watch out for foil adhesive does not level so if you look at this 
you can see my brush strokes. So you really want to make sure your brush strokes work in conjunction of, with what you've got. It's very hard to get something that has absolutely no brush strokes on it. Um, and Christina, uh, I'll put the link to our website on the top if you're not familiar with it, but if you want to browse while we're talking, it's paintedstudio.com. And we have, I think I counted the other day, we had something like 130 foils on our website. So you have lots and lots of options. Now I did the red over red paint instead of black. I found just because I wanted this as red as possible with no black showing, that a good coating of red works really well under red foil. Now, if you're not going to use black or dark brown or dark gray as your base color, then find a base color that is as close to your foil as you can find. Now, clearly I have to go in and patch that spot. I'm just trying to use up the last of this sample roll that I had. Okay, I just need a little more of this. Like I said, little sample roll. I think there was like, this is maybe six inches wide and there was maybe four feet on here. So we don't have a whole lot of it. I just want to use it up for Christmas. Um, also, when you order from us, some of you may not be aware, you might get a package that has used foil scraps in there. Don't throw those out. Those are a benefit. Those are a gift from us because the foil scraps that you get are always filled with plenty of usable foil. And that way you can test out or highlight uh, a small project with a color that you might not have in your stock, in your studio or your workspace already. So don't don't throw away scraps. Yeah. We're, not, we're not sending you our garbage, we're sending you good stuff. <laughs> now because you all have enjoyed the scraps so much, I'm actually having to limit what packages get foil scraps. So if you, if I know you're a person, if you ordered a lot of foils from us regularly, yes, you'll get foils, scraps in your packages. If you're ordering foils and adhesive, that means I know you want foil, so I'm gonna put scraps in those packages too. If, if you're ordering plasters and stuff, and I don't know that you've embraced foils, I will not mail you foil scraps because I don't, want you to get something that you can't use. All right, so let me put some top coat on here. So the reason you see me do this first is that it offloads my brush and then I can move everything around evenly instead of having a big blob of it in the center that I have to work on spreading. Doing this means I've put a bunch of product on and then I can spread it around. So that's seal two. I'm gonna check now. I am gonna be pushing it by trying to release the foil on here. We always tell you wait at least an hour for your foil adhesive to cure up and get to a firm tack. But on live, sometimes I push stuff. So let's hope I don't rip the paint off the cup doing this because that's what happens. You, you either get a foil that will not release anything on here because it's too gummy or you can pull this back <laughs> and rip the paint all the way off the surface. Not just the foil, the paint. Okay, I got lucky. I put it on thin enough. It released for me. So now I can put a little top coat on this one.
And while it dulls the look right when I apply it, once it's dried clear, I don't see much distortion, change of shine level, anything on them. Okay, there's that one dry. Okay, now let's see if I can remember what order I went in because that's how the order that they will be driest in, I think. I don't remember, that's close. I know we started with the black one, so that's easy. All right, so now I've got to grab, I'm gonna do Celebrate on it with a champagne cup, champagne glasses. So I did this one before in golds and blacks, so this one's going to be silvers and blues. So the first thing, of course, I have to do is get my backing paper off and make sure, even though I've burnished this down a million times, I'm gonna make sure all my lettering is stuck to the backing tape because if you've ever done this, you know that the lettering actually likes to stick to the mounting, to this stuff, a lot. Now this is a vinyl that's new to me. I bought it on Amazon. It is not um, from Cricut, so I'm hoping it's pretty good. It was a good price. Hopefully it's also a good product. We'll find out. Now I've got to line this up carefully so I can get it as straight as possible. I'm human, so likely there'll be a little bit of unevenness. Just like last time, it wants the way this word's cut, it wants to curve down a little bit here. Oh, I'm happy with this. This is, you know, if this comes off well. And using a pointed tweezer like this, you have to be really careful to slide the tweezer under the, the tape, but not jab your surface. I will tell most of you, wait overnight after you've top coated before you put your letters on. But of course, I push everything because we're doing a live. And the reason is, if you look at the back of my tape closely, there's a little bit of the top coat that actually came off. Now it won't show in the end, but it can make a mess of your project. So now I've got my Celebrate on here. I've got that mounted so in the center here on the back, I need to put my little champagne glasses. Okay, now we gotta peel the backing off. And let's see how it's stuck. All right, I'm impressed. One of the nice things, this was really inexpensive vinyl. I'm impressed with how well it's grabbing on the uh, transfer tape. Usually that's not that good. Usually it's a little harder to deal with. So I'm very pleased with this. Now the hardest part of doing any of these transfers is when you have to bend over a curve because most of this vinyl doesn't like that. Oh my gosh, Desiree, I think I need to bring you on as my assistant. Desiree's got the website up there for people to find. She's telling everybody with face paint. Thank you, Desiree. I appreciate the help. Oh my gosh, extra scraps in your next order. There we go. Now, there had been a third star with this, but I had shrunk this down so much it didn't want to cut. So look at that, how cute that is. It says celebrate. Oh. <laughs> That's right. Okay, I'd be good with that. Gosh, you guys are so awesome. Thank you so much for all the help because I'm, understand my phone's here and I don't have my iPad running because I found that it doesn't work as well for me to try to keep up with comments. So I don't always see what you guys are saying. And I have good news for everybody too. I know this is gonna make some of you do happy dances. I have new lighting on order, so maybe that we will have a consistent source of lighting right down here instead of my 
silly little desk lamp that likes to fall down. So we're, I'm working hard to make these videos even better. I am working on new, getting new tripods, new zoom functions, new everything. It just takes a little time. All right, so now we have, I think we did the, I'm trying to remember what order I did things in because that will make a difference on how dry the adhesive is or how dry the top coat is before I do anything to it. So here's the gold one. And let's see, which one did I have? I have to remember which set of words I had planned for which cups. Okay, that's, I think that's gonna go on there. Merry and bright. Okay, here's what I had for this one. Now this is gonna be a little harder to place because Merry and bright, I, I cut my Merry and bright And I need to lay this on here in a way that the uh, letters conform because I've got a little, you know, I've got these ridges. Sorry, it took a minute to try to read what you guys were saying. And honestly, you've got a conversation going that's so cool. And I'm not, I'm not dipping into that right now. And I, I could get distracted and then we'll just never get our cups done. So I think to do this right, instead of trying to put letters up here over the ridges, I'm going to put Mary, then and, and then bright. I'll, I'll step it down a little bit. So be patient with me. I got to work this one out because while I figured out all oh, this wonderful lettering, I didn't figure out placement. forgot these cups had ridges while I was doing the lettering so I didn't want to I don't want to ruin the cups I need to get the Mary at the very top of the lowest ridge there's my Mary and where'd my tweezers go I buried them And don't pull your tapes up straight like this. That's a lot of stress both on the foil and painted surface and on the vinyl. Roll it back. You'll get a better release. Just roll it back completely perpendicular. It helps you control this a lot. Uh, oh, yeah. Cut the words apart and balance them. I do that all the time. All right, so we've got our Mary. All right. I think now that I'm seeing this on here, let me see how bright falls. I may just do this in a band. Yeah, I think that's where I'm gonna do, because I think if I go down here, it's gonna end up distorting. I'm not gonna be happy with how it looks. And the funny thing is I type this stuff out, pick out the font myself and then cut it. And my mind says one thing and then I get there and the reality is completely different. So I'm not at all surprised that the first way I typed it was actually the better way. I'm gonna hold on to that bright. I think I'm gonna place, eh, no, I can do this. I should be able to do this, no problem. Okay. Mary and one more word. Now, for those of you who are cricket people, you know how this works. You've, you've done this before, but for somebody who's never done this, go slow, be patient. If you screw it up, it peels off. I am, oh, by the way, I use permanent vinyl, not, remo uh, not move, uh, repositionable vinyl. The repositional vinyl, uh, repositionable vinyl, when you do this stuff, when you start doing top coats and epoxy over them, they like to lift up, like a lot. Let's get this letter on here straight. Oh, yep, that worked perfectly. And it's spaced just right. So we've got Mary 
and bright. That came out just right. Oh, I'm so happy with how that came out. Hey, Kathy Brown, nice to see you here. Okay, so we got that one done. This one. <laughs> oh, I love this. I did Merry Christmas in Old English. So I am, <laughs> I gotta play with this for just a second to see how it wraps, if I can get both words around the cup without overlapping. Yep, I got, God, gosh darn it, I actually managed to measure these right. Now, if any of you don't have Cricut makers and you need something like this cut out, reach out to me. I'll cut it for you for a fee and do all of this and back it and it'll be, I'll just send it to you. You'll be all ready to go. So don't think just because you don't have the cutter, you can't do this because I will make the cuts for you. I will send you whatever phrases. You send me the size of the cup you're working on and I'll tell you exactly, I'll cut the letters to fit your, your piece. The first Christmas goes on because it is the longer word and it'll be a little hard to keep, harder to keep straight on here because that's not what it wanted to, there we go. And you know, these are handmade, so sometimes your lettering might be crooked on one. A little bit, a little bit won't be noticeable, especially on a round surface. A lot of it really will be. In. So if you go really crooked on it, say thank you, call it intentional, and work the rest of your design around it. Okay, so my A does not want to come off. It's transfer tape. And I will also tell you something. I bought one of these, the kits that Cricut sells that you can get their scraper and their weeding tools and all of that stuff. And I have to tell you, I hate the tweezer that's with it. And for a very specific reason. Um, they're reverse pressure tweezers. So I never feel like I have a good grip on anything with them and they just don't work well for me. And I'll show you, if you're not familiar with what a reverse pressure tweezer is, um, I'll show you in a second. Okay, so I got my Christmas on. Uh, let's see, let me see if I can reach it from here. So these, these are the tweezers that these are the tweezers that I use, and you can buy them online if you don't see them like this. Look for eyelash tweezers, because they're usually these kind of tweezers are usually used for applying um, eyelash extensions. These are reverse pressure, meaning that instead of pushing them closed to hold on, you push it open and then let it go to grab. I don't like that because I feel like when it's I let go to grab stuff, there's not enough pressure in there to grab things. I prefer normal tweezers. All right, here's my Mary. Let me burnish. And it's really funny that the Y in the Mary tends to look, it looks like an N, but I checked this spelling on this like five times going, that just looks weird. No, it's the way this font cuts the letters. Give myself my spacing. Oh, that's perfect. That fit just right. I can use my tip of my scissor too sometimes to lift the, the transfer tape. I gotta make sure this all wants to stick. This red seems to be a little bit temperamental, but it'll still work. Okay, where's my other tweezers? Come on, you little sucker. 
get off the transfer tape and stick to the I love it when I have one letter that wants to be difficult. And of course it's a delicate one because the bridge is on the E's and want to tear if you're not careful. I picked a, a funky font for this one to say the least. Okay. There we go. And we have Merry Christmas. Uh, think about walking around, looking at Christmas trees. Hey Susan, with hot cocoa or better yet, hot spiked cocoa in your little cup that says Merry Christmas. How much, how festive. All right, let's move some of my little scrap bits out of the way so I can get to the next one. Okay, for our red one, I got Let It Snow. That'll pop really nice and a little snowflake to go on it. So some of these I put letters only, some of these I put letters in a little image. You can do whatever makes you happy. I don't, I didn't do any images for the cups, these cups, because they're a little smaller. So I knew I might not have enough space to put the letters and an image like I do on these bigger cups. Gosh, thank you all for popping in. It's so great to see you here. All right, we're gonna put peel back our Let It Snow. And when you see me rubbing, what I'm doing is helping to adhere the letters to the transfer tape. Okay. Let's see. See if I can get it on straight because we know sometimes I don't. I could go completely crooked, but I don't really want to do that. So I'm trying to get them straight. It reads better. Okay, there we go. Let it snow. Lift carefully. And of course, first letter doesn't want to stick. Because why not? <laughs> This is why we always have the go slowly. You keep the little tweezers in your hand because then you can roll back, pull it off of the backing tape if you need to. There you little stinker. There we go. I'm not sticking the tips in, of those tweezers into the vinyl because uh, I don't want to damage the vinyl. I don't want to see any funny pucker marks or dimpling in it. I'm using the side to scrape it off the backing tape and push it down. That one stuck nicely. It's the little verticals and horizontals on some letters. They just don't want to grab. Happens with almost every lettering project. Okay, so that says, let it snow. And we're gonna put, after I peel off the backing tape, we're gonna put the snowflake right on there. Now on bigger surfaces, I usually, um, don't pull off the whole backing, but something so small as this, that's what makes sense, is just to peel off all of the backing. It does not want to grab the backing today. Come on, grab on there. There we go. Oh, snowflakes have lots of little funny spots and you might have to work it off. Okay, 
almost there. Just want to make sure that none of the details of the snowflake tear off by accident. Okay, so I've got my little snowflake. So I know where it and at word's end, so I can kind of throw this out in the center. There we go. Burnish it down to the surface and then peel back the mounting tape or transfer tape. I, I come up with weird words for things, but this is, if you're buying it in the store, it's called transfer tape. When I'm working on something and trying to talk, I lose my words. And it's bad enough I lose them on a regular basis, but I really lose them when I'm trying to do work at the same time. So look how cute our snow is with our let it snow. I love how this looks, very festive. Okay, now this has been top coated. It should be dry enough for me to put on. We're gonna do this one in gold with the Joyeux Noel. Uh, and this one, when it cut, the capital letters because the way fonts work on a machine, they were way away from the rest of the world. Uh, rest of the world, the rest of the word. Um, so I actually picked them up and moved them before um, I put the mounting tape on because I wanted the, or the transfer tape on because I wanted the word, the letters co placed correctly. No, I happen to have chosen French. I did a bunch of ornaments. I did them in Swedish. I did them in Italian. I did them in Spanish. Quite frankly, if my Japanese was good enough, I would have done them in Japanese and hiragana. But uh, yeah, I don't, that my Japanese is not even that good. So if you want something done in a specific language, I can do that for you too if you need it. If you don't have a cutter, for those of you who do, Use the cutter to create as much wonderful stuff as you can. Do not, not use your cutter. Okay, now that's going to have a slightly sloped deposit on the letter. That X is going to have a little moment for me because, again, these things are tapered just ever so slightly so that it wants to curl a little bit. Yes, these make great presents. Um, and I got to tell you, they're, they're for as pre-made items here in the studio, they're selling like crazy too because y'all catch me doing, doing them on videos. Um, and then people just <laughs> had somebody come in. I have everything heaped up to put in the front window. And she's like, do you mind if I go through the piles and buy some of this? But yeah, go ahead. And this lovely lady came in and took advantage of the fact that, you know, I was doing the window and everything was right there and she just sorted through everything and found herself some wonderful gifts. Okay, so I got my X down correctly because there was a little bubble where that X was, so I did get it on. It was just gonna be a little challenge and I met the challenge, we're all good. So now we're just gonna get the Noel down. should do one in German because my family background is German, English, Irish, and French. Well, I've got the English. I've got the <laughs> French. Uh, I don't know if you can, I don't know if there's, you can actually say Merry Christmas in Gaelic. I've never tried. So there we've got our Joyeux Noel on these. Oh, these all came out so cute. All right, I think... We are going to call it done for this live. Um, I'm going to get this area cleaned up. We'll come back. Yeah, I know it's amazing to sell things before I even put them on the floor to be sold. I, I, I'm very grateful to our customers. I have nothing but gratitude for what they do for us. So we're going to come back in about a half an hour. I'm going to clean up this mess, half hour, 45 minutes. We're going to do the epoxy on four cups, not five. The reason is... I only have five cup turners. So we're gonna take a 
couple minutes, we'll figure out. I may have apply. I may apply or have applied some glitter to some of these when we come back to the next level. But the one that won't be turning tonight, I will show you how I did that. All right, everybody. I will see you shortly. Have a good one.